Welcome, and thank you for joining me on this presentation. 75 years after the creation of the AVSA, we now have tens of thousands of named and or registered African violets. This guide is intended to help you understand the written descriptions. As you can see here, there are four main blossom shapes that are now found in African violets and many variations upon that. So there's the single, or now called the pansy, the star, the bell, and the wasp. The single, and more recently called pansy blossom, is the original blossom of the species violets. The single pansy was the original blossom and before everyone began to hybridize. This blossom has only five petals, with the top two are usually slightly smaller than the bottom three petals, and this shape of blossom is found in any color. Any color combination with a fantasy or without, and even as a chimera, even though it may now be found ruffled, semi-double or double, the basic shape of five petals is going to be consistent. And most blossoms that are described in First Class for All, which is the AVSA software, of this shape are described as pansy. Moving on to the star-shaped blossom, this blossom has five equally sized petals that are equally spaced around the blossom. This shape appeared early in the hybridizing, but it now can now be found as a single, a semi-double or a double, but it always remains in the form of a star. It can be found in any color combination or pattern, and this example is seen as a puff fantasy. The bell-shaped blossoms are actually single blossoms that don't open completely because they are fused together, each of those little petals at the base, and um, the bell flower can be a solid color, can be multicolor, fantasy marking, edged, or even a chimera. The wasp blossom has a really unique look. It's a variation of a single. It still has those five petals, but they are completely separated from each other, longer, narrower. Sometimes the top two petals will curl around backwards. This wasp shape now comes in any color, color combination, and can also be found in semi-double or double. The four blossom shapes we just discussed can come with variations on those shapes, and those are semi-double, double, and ruffled. This is an example of a semi-double blossom. A semi-double is one that has more than five petals, but it has less than 10. They might appear single at first because they might have a small tuft or clump of petals in the center. They can also be an uneven row. The term semi-double can apply to all the main blossom shapes and all the color patterns. This one is a semi-double on a pansy bloom. Here we have an example of a double blossom. This is one that has more than 10 full-size petals. They have an additional row of petals on the inside. They can even cover up the anthers. Some double blossoms have more than 10 petals, can even be triple, and they usually call this a fully double. The term double can be applied to all the blossom shapes and all the blossom color patterns. This example is on an edged pattern. And here's the ruffled blossom. Other terms for this blossom can also be called fluted, fringed, or frilled. The description is pretty much open to interpretation and that depends on how tight the ruffles are on the outside edge of the blossom. The terms ruffled, fluted, frilled, or fringed can be applied to any blossom shape, and that blossom can be any color or pattern. And this example is a ruffled, semi-double pansy with a fantasy pattern. We've talked about the blossom shapes and the possible variations, and here are the five main color patterns that can now be applied to those. They are edged, multicolor, two-tone, fantasy, and chimera. Here we have an edged blossom. The word edge is referring to the colored edge on the blossom. This blossom can be any shape or color. 
the edge can be any color or white. The white edge used to be referred to as Geneva. It is rarely used today. So this blossom could also be edged as a semi-double or a double. The example here is a single ruffled star with a white edge. This is a multicolor blossom and it's pretty easy to describe. It's simply two or more colors on a blossom. In this case, it's a single pansy blossom, pink and white, two colors. A two-tone blossom is one that is described as a blossom that has two or more tones or shades of a single color. In this case, it's light and dark purple. You can also describe it as a light and dark value of one single color. So this example is on a pansy shaped blossom. Fantasy blossoms. They're some of my favorites. There's so much variety here. Fantasy blossoms are streaked or splotched with a different color or with rays of a different color. The color of the fantasy marking can be lighter or darker or another color altogether from the base color. It can appear on any shape of a blossom, can be a double or a semi-double. And this example is a fantasy with another color on a pansy blossom. This is the chimera blossom. It's not as often seen. The chimera has stripes and the look of a pinwheel with those stripes radiating down the center. Those two colors of stripes have two different types of chromosomes. Therefore, chimeras can only be produced by suckers or bloom stalks and not through leaf propagation. The chimera color can be any color on any type of blossom. They can be singles, semi-doubles, doubles. This example is on a star-shaped blossom. You can begin to see why with so many blossom shapes, variations, and color patterns, there is an incredible number of possibilities. Add any of those blossom shapes to any of our leaf shapes and variations, and it's nearly limitless. But I'm going to start talking about the four or five most common leaf types we see. And so there you've got um, the most common ones that we see are plain, round, pointed, and heart-shaped. Here we've got plain foliage, also probably the most common. It's plain in texture and form. It's also sometimes called boy foliage or standard foliage. And there are no special markings, no special edges. This is plain foliage. This is an example of a round leaf. The round leaves are probably one of the most commonly seen leaf shapes. But here we've got the length and the width of these leaves is roughly equal, giving it a very beautiful round appearance. So these leaves can be found solid or variegated. And here we have our pointed leaf. On the pointed leaf, it always comes to a definite point on the end, and the width of a pointed leaf is commonly a little bit narrower at the base. They can be solid, they can be variegated, and there is some variation within that pointedness, if you want to say that. Um, they can be a little bit longer and more arrow-shaped, but you'll always find a pointed tip on this. And this very pretty shape is called a heart-shaped leaf. And as the name implies, they are shaped like a heart with a pointed tip, and but they're indented a little bit at the top where the stem attaches. I often see them solid, but they can be variegated and um, very beautiful leaf. This is an example of a solid with a little bit of a serrated edge. This next group of leaves that I've illustrated are also seen. There are quite a few of these, but they may be a little less common in their shape or form. And they are a quilted leaf, the ruffled leaves, longifolia leaves, spooned leaves, and serrated leaves. This quilted leaf, I think you can see why it's called quilted. They have a texture that looks puffy because they have kind of a raised um, area between the veins. They have a very unique look. I, I love quilted leaves. They tend to have a scalloped edge and they can be more rounded on the tip. Um, they can be solid, they can be variegated. And this example is a Tommy Lou variegated leaf.
Here's an example of a ruffled leaf. The ruffled leaf has the outer edge or leaf margin all the way around the leaf can be very wavy or slightly wavy. Extremely ruffled leaves can be called fringed leaves. The edges can even appear ragged or serrated. Ruffled leaves can be solid green or they can be variegated, a very beautiful leaf. And here we have a long afolia leaf. The long afolia leaves are long and narrow, sometimes strap-like, sometimes pointed, but often rounded. It's just their proportions are quite a bit longer than they are wide. They're sometimes called a spider leaf. They can be plain or variegated. This example is a variegated leaf. Here's a spooned leaf, and it's actually a fairly uncommon leaf. Uh, spoon leaves are usually ovate in shape, but they are not always, and they have a rolled up edge, especially toward the stem end. But some of these varieties are rolled up all the way around the edge, giving them a very literal spoon shape. Next is a serrated leaf. They have a sawtooth edge all the way around the leaf or on the leaf margin. They can be found on most leaf shapes and they can be solid or they can be variegated. And this example happens to be on a heart-shaped leaf. See the indention toward the stem. So what we have here are some of the uncommon but really interesting leaf shapes. And I think there's a lot of interest in these recently, so I think we'll probably be seeing more of these in the future, but currently they're pretty uncommonly seen. And those are the bustleback leaf, the girl leaves, the hollies, rarely seen, clackamas, and supreme. So the first of our uncommon leaf types is the bustled or bustleback. Even though these are pretty uncommon, they were actually first discovered as spontaneous uh, mutations in the 1950s. Uh, I chose to illustrate this from the back of the leaf, where I think the unique details can be seen pretty clearly. And so what you've got here are, um, they typically have two small lobes or a single lobe or leaf that are attached to the primary leaf near the base of the stem and these leaves these little leaves or lobes commonly bend backwards. Sometimes they're called compound leaves, wasp leaves, or piggyback. And like I said, this example is shown from the back side of a leaf. So next is our example of a girl leaf. Girl leaves are usually, the leaf appears pretty rounded or heart-shaped. And a unique feature of these, they're deeply scalloped leaves, and they have also a light, almost white or noticeably light, little cup-shaped spot near the base of the leaf, and that lighter pigment kind of radiates out to the leaf edges, like you see here. And these leaves, these girl leaves, can be green, or they can, they're beautiful on a variegated leaf as well. This is the girl leaf. And this is the holly leaf, a very unusually or not common seen leaf. And I chose to illustrate this one from the back as well, because I think you can see that those indentations are caused by the leaf edges curling under. So when viewed from the top, uh, you see these kind of large, broad indentations that resemble a holly leaf. This is an example of clackamas foliage, and because this was discovered in Clackamas, Oregon in the 1950s, it's been around a long time, but there aren't a lot of these available to see. Um, it's also commonly called watermelon foliage because the leaf pattern resembles the skin of a watermelon with those long horizontal parallel lines. Um, there are only a few registered violets with clackamas foliage, and, but this feature can appear on any leaf shape and be on any solid green or variegated foliage. This example is on a solid oval leaf. Oops, where is the illustration here? Unfortunately, I did not have a good example of, of a supreme leaf to show you, even though I was fortunate to 
draw almost every other example from my own collection. I did not have one of these to show you. So we'll just talk about the description. It's typically on a large violet. Um, the leaves are described as being very large, very hairy. They're quilted or very textured, thick leaves and can sometimes be brittle. The petioles are thick and pencil-like. And I'm sorry I don't have an example of this leaf, but we may be able to edit this at a future point. And here we have, I think, everybody's favorite, the variegated leaves. So the variegated types are variegated or formerly called Tommy Lou, mosaic, or formerly called Lily and Jarrett, crown variegation, and the newer and rare Chimera variegation. First is our variegated leaf. This was originally called Tommy Lou, and this first occurred in the 1950s. And it is really described by white spots or a lack of pigment on the outside leaf edges or the margins. And the variegation ranges from a small border on the outside edges to very wide area. And a lot of that really depends upon the temperature because the cooler it's grown, the wider the area of variegation begins, the warmer it's grown, the smaller the area of variegation. Um, there can be more than one light color on a variegated parts because those variegated areas can be found in any color, white, light green, they can be rose, red, copper, pink, or cream. And variegated leaf can turn up on any of the leaf shapes. And this example is illustrated on a plain leaf shape. And here I've drawn an example of the mosaic leaf pattern. Um, this is a variegation pattern, was also discovered in the 50s, and it was formerly called Lillian Jarrett. Now we call it mosaic. So the pattern of variegation on a mosaic leaf is the opposite of the Tommy Lou type because the light part is on the inside of the leaf and the green is on the outside. On that inside light color, it can be one of quite a few different colors. It can be white, light green, rose, red, copper, pink, or cream, and sometimes you'll see more than one color in there. The ver this type of variegated leaf can be found on all leaf types. And you will find some um, African violets being described as mosaic leaves, but they're not true mosaic, and you will find that description better in First Class for All on AVSA software. Um, that would be an example of some that are called mosaic, but they're not true mosaic. Anyway, this is a mosaic leaf. And this is an example of crown variegation, and it was formerly called champion variegation. A crown variegated plant has a white or light color. Sometimes it's yellow pigment or pink pigment, and you can see a, lot, a little bit of that there in the illustration. And that pigment gets darker as the leaves age. So you can see this is uh, an example of a young miniature, and you can see the light pigmented with a lot of yellow coming out in the beginning. And as each um, trio of leaves gets a little bit older, they turn darker green. So um, anyway, this is what is called crown variegation. And the last illustrated slide of this presentation is the chimera. The chimera is a leaf pattern it's a result of a rare spontaneous mutation. You've got two cells of different genotypes appearing on one plant on one leaf. So it's not a true variegation. Uh, it can't be produced or duplicated through leaf propagation, but only through suckers. So that makes this type of plant very rare, more time consuming for those of us to reproduce it. So the appearance is normal green pigmentation on the outside leaf margins and a strip or a light area of pigment on the inside of the leaf. And the colors range from cream to beige to white on the inside. This trait, it can potentially appear on any leaf shape or type. Thank you so much for joining me on this presentation and I hope 
that these illustrations have helped you to identify the different leaf and blossom types on your African violets. I know our hardworking researchers, hybridizers and growers, we've come a long way since the very beginning and I can't wait to see what's in our future.